Crosscode is one of my favorite games of all time. And with the love I feel for this game, I have the urge to tell more people about this underrated masterpiece. If you play Crosscode yet, tell me in the comments and leave a like if you enjoy this video. This is a love letter, so let me tell you about the beauty of Crosscode. Crosscode is a retro-inspired action RPG with a pixel art style and an isometric view. It first came out in 2018 on PC and was later released on consoles. It was developed by Radical Fish Games, a studio from Germany, which is the country I was born in. But okay, with the basics out of the way, let's get into why Crosscode is a true gem that more people should talk about. I divided this video into several parts, so without any further ado, let's go! The whole game takes place in Cross Worlds, which is an MMORPG, so you're playing a game in a game. Sounds familiar, right? You probably know the premise from Sword Art Online or the Dotec series, which many people don't know is actually a bit older than SAO. I won't talk too much about the story, but I'll tell you the idea that is having first hours. It gets obvious pretty quickly that the protagonist Leia is a special character in this world. She lost her memory, is the only one who is connected to a person outside the game named Sergei and constantly communicating with him. And she has basically no ability to talk. In the game this is explained by a malfunctioning speech module of Leia's avatar. Later. More words are added to her vocabulary so that she can have basic conversations. Leia wants to regain her memory with the help of Sergei. The only way to do that is to play the MMO Crosswords. What may sound generic at first turns out to be an engaging story full of emotion, twists and moments you probably don't see coming. Although the setting of Crosscode is an MMORPG, it feels very much like a traditional role-playing game. I mean, of course it is designed to always remind you that you play a character in an online game. Every area you are in is filled with other players running around. You can call up friends you meet along the journey to form a party. And besides the story of Cross Code, you also experience the story of Cross Worlds. What makes the story special are the philosophical themes of identity and life. This game asks nothing less than the questions, who am I? What is human? And what is not? Am I alive? What is life? Finding the answers to these questions lead to the most emotional moments of Crosscode that hit surprisingly hard. But other than these big themes and concepts, the characters deal with relatable and real interpersonal problems. Like an argument between friends, which result in them not talking to each other for a while. Or rivalry and jealousy, with the obsession of one character to prove that he's the best, when in truth he only has to learn to accept himself and be self-confident. Or misunderstanding each other, which is kinda obvious because Leia isn't exactly able to communicate properly. It's done so beautifully how these big topics and small problems are perfectly blended into one game. All that adds so much to character development and their personalities. Many of the characters are well written and change throughout the story. Not always for the better, but that only makes it feel more real and relatable. And again, don't worry, I won't spoil any of the plot points or character development. But just be prepared for an RPG full of emotion. I laughed, I was sad, I cheered and felt invincible. And at one point I even had a small tear in my eye. If you don't know Crosscode at all, you may ask yourself, how can a game with this style of graphics be so emotional? And yeah, it's not like there are actors playing these characters to really capture every emotion in their facial expressions and gesturing. And there are no cutscenes in a traditional sense. But most of the story is told in this visual novel style. I don't know if it's actually called like that, but it reminds me of visual novel games. What's special about it are the character models. Their design are fantastic and although there isn't much movement in them, they manage to deliver emotions so well. I mean look at them. The facial expressions are so nuanced that the characters have many possibilities to express themselves. 
So unlike games from the past, with one character image attached to a text box and your interpretation of how to read a text, CrossCode gives its protagonists so many ways to show the player what they feel. It's amazing how much work went into the design of these models and how incredibly detailed they are. There are small pieces of art for sure. What always amazes me about that is that the developers managed to give Leia a real personality by just using these character models. Again, she isn't able to talk more than a few words, so it's hard for her to really say what she wants to say. But trust me, you not only know when she's sad, angry, scared or happy. You will also know when she's cheeky, when she feels confident, when she's reserved or even when she's pissed. I put level design and gameplay in one category, and you will see why in a minute. Like I already said, CrossCode is an action RPG. The combat system is fast paced, fun and more complex than it may seem at first. In Cross Worlds, Leia's class is called Spheromancer, so she has quite a few options to beat up enemies. Besides a standard melee attack, a block and a dash, you can aim and shoot spheres or balls to deal damage. These four basic actions, plus the four different elements you can swap between and the enemy design result in an absolutely unique battle system, where many fights are actually a puzzle that is incredibly satisfying to solve. It starts off quite simple. Some enemies avoid your melee attack completely, so you have to wait for an opportunity to throw a sphere at the right time to stun it and then punch it in the face. Other enemies you can only attack from behind and some foes only take damage if you use the right element they are weak to. Boss fights are always designed like a little puzzle. For example, one of the first bosses doesn't take damage at first, but if you dodge its attacks, it exposes its weak spot and you can strike. Another early boss is more straightforward, but you have to utilize the environment to avoid the strongest attack. Every single boss has its own mechanic you have to figure out that keeps the combat itself fresh and boss battles are memorable and unique. But especially in dungeons, these encounters get more complex. Here many battles use the same puzzle mechanics that are introduced in the dungeon itself. I think design-wise, this is a very clever decision of the developers. I assume they knew that the combat couldn't be fun for long if they only gave the player basic actions and four elements to fight with. And it really shows how aware the team was that CrossCode has its limitation in what they could do with the combat. So the best thing they were able to do with it was fusing the puzzles with the battles. What an excellent decision. But let me make two things very clear. First of all, not all battles have puzzles in them. That is just mostly true for boss fights and encounters and dungeons. And second, all that doesn't mean that combat isn't fun without the puzzles. In fact, I was surprised by how ridiculous some skills are. I mean, look, you get from this to that. That's so crazy and skills are super fun to pull off. I already told you that you have four basic actions, but I didn't tell you that every single one of these actions come with their own set of skills. That means you can not only perform skills using your melee attack, there are also abilities for your dash, your shield and of course for throwing spheres. And the best thing about that is, the skill tree provides more than one skill option for each one of these actions and you are able to swap between them at any point. And with each action assigned to a specific button, there is no need for you to limit yourself what you want to use in combat. And as if this wasn't already a sensational and thrilling way to beat up some evil pixels, the whole skill system applies to each element on its own. So for example, throwing the spheres with an ice element is a completely different skill than throwing them with an active fire element. Using the melee attack in neutral mode causes a different action than with the shock element. And because it's so easy to change elements with the d-pad, you have a ton of skills ready to use with just a few button presses. Again, I am fascinated and totally amazed by this design. It's so simple but incredibly effective, because 
what gets clear very early is that the developers put one important component on top of everything else, and that is fun. I think they did a great job with that. But let's rewind for a second. I already mentioned puzzles and dungeons. They are a key element of CrossCode and the reason I completely fell in love with this game. The dungeon design is often compared to The Legend of Zelda because every room is a puzzle and you get a specific item halfway through that you need for the rest of the puzzles. Here's where the spheres come in again. Solving one room requires you to use spheres most of the time, but not exclusively. The main difference between the puzzles in CrossCode and The Legend of Zelda is that in CrossCode they are all physics based. Throwing a ball at a wall causes it to bounce back in a physically logical angle and many puzzles are exactly about that. But there are more physics based mechanics like using magnets to pull some objects into the right place. Also you need to figure out what to do with the environment using the spheres and your elements. For example, in some rooms you will find these bubbles that react differently depending on what element you use. Shooting it without an element just moves the bubble around. Hitting it with fire vaporizes it and causes a small wind blow, and throwing ice spheres freezes it to an ice disk. Another example would be these water pillars that react to fire and ice in their respective ways. Although it is tempting for me to show you more examples so that I can really explain the genius behind these puzzles, I won't do that because figuring out on your own how each room works and what role the different objects in the environment play is extremely fun. I don't want to take that away from you. What I can say about the puzzle and dungeon design is that they find the perfect sweet spot between being difficult and making mechanics approachable enough to not let you get frustrated because you take hours to figure out what you need to do next. And because every puzzle is in that sweet spot, this game makes you feel so clever. I had many moments where I went like, ah, that's what I need to do. And then after a few attempts, I solved the room and was always a bit proud of myself. And it took me more than one attempt most of the time. Figuring out what you need to do is one thing. Actually pulling that off is another, because what you also need is agility and skill. Sometimes you need to be fast, other times very precise, and every now and then you need to be both. This whole loop of identifying what to do and then trying to translate that into the actual action is something I haven't seen in a long time. The puzzle design reminds me a lot of a game from the 90s called Alundra, also one of my favorite games of all time. I will definitely make a video about that game too. But back to CrossCode, the puzzle section isn't done yet. Besides the dungeons and boss fights, there are what I would call optional environmental jumping puzzles. You can find these in the vast areas between towns and dungeons. There is no jump button, but approaching an edge makes Leia hop on the platform if it's not too high. Finding the right way to jump to get to a treasure is a whole different kind of fun and also unexpectedly tense. You need precision and good eyes to see exactly where you need to go next. Overall, I am impressed by how rich this world is designed with so many things to do and how creative all of the puzzles are designed. New ideas are introduced constantly that keep the gameplay fresh. I could go on forever, but I hope that this gave you a good idea of how this game works. I can't talk about the beauty of CrossCode without mentioning the absolute masterpiece of a soundtrack this game comes with. The music was composed by Dennis Akbulut, a composer I only know for his work on CrossCode. There are two things that make this soundtrack really special. The first one is the melodic focus of each track. Modern games nowadays have beautiful orchestral music, there's no question about that. But there is a certain kind of magic of games from the 80s, 90s and early 2000s. Especially RPG soundtrack with no voice acting had to find a way to give the game a different kind of voice. And that's why Melody plays a big part in soundtrack of RPGs like Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. CrossCode picks up on that way of approaching the soundtrack and that alone makes it memorable and is one indicator for the love of the developers for retro games. The second thing that is so magnificent about the soundtrack for me 
is that I feel like there are so many different references and inspirations to older games on a more musical level. I mean, I'm not really sure if this is intentional or if I'm even right with assuming Dennis Akbulut heard any of the songs I am thinking of when I hear Crosscode's music, but I show you some examples and maybe you know what I mean. Listen closely to the sound of the synth melody here. And now listen to the synth line in this track from Fantasy Star Online. Here's another example. Again, listen to that synth sound of the melody. Okay, now hear what the synth sounds like in this other track from Fantasy Star Online. If I hear this track or many others of Crosscode's amazing pieces, I hear similar sounding synthesizers and even some ideas regarding intervals in the melodies that remind me a lot of Phantasy Star Online or even Phantasy Star Universe. But not only the synth sounds and melodies remind me a lot of games I played as a kid or teenager. Also there are many songs in the soundtrack that have bass lines that sound familiar to me. Here's another example, listen to that bass line. And now tell me if you hear the similarity to the bassline in this track from Chrono Trigger. I'm not sure if it's called like that, but the soundtrack of Chrono Trigger has a lot of basslines from a fretless bass. With a fretless bass, you can seamlessly slide between notes, which creates some of the most unique sounds of Chrono Trigger's soundtrack. And in some songs, I can hear that in the soundtrack of Crosscode. And this is just one example of a similar sounding bass line. Here's one last example. Listen to this Crosscode track and tell me it is not inspired by the following Final Fantasy VIII song. I really hope I was able to make clear what I mean. If not, do this. Go to Spotify or YouTube, give this whole soundtrack a listen. If you played games like Fantasy Star Online, Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, Alundra or one of the East games, you can probably hear what I mean. But I don't want to do the soundtrack any injustice. Of course, Dennis Akbulu proves himself to be an amazing composer with great own ideas. The melodies are memorable, the tracks range from beautiful piano pieces to jazzy sounding songs and thrilling battle themes. The music underlines the emotion portrayed by the pixel art character models. And in dungeons, when you need to concentrate on the puzzles, the tracks are a perfect fit to provide a sense of relaxation. Dennis Akbulut created one of my favorite soundtracks of all time for Crosscode. Even if you never played the game, I would recommend you listen to the soundtrack. It's available on Spotify and YouTube. I could go on and say good things about this game for hours, but it's best if you discover Crosscode with its beautiful world on your own. But if you already played it, we can still talk about it. Comment down below what you think about Crosscode. 
I would love to hear what you have to say about it. For example, tell me what your favorite reference is. There are so many in CrossCode that really show the love of the developers for video games and pop culture. My favorite are the trophies you can get for completing certain challenges or milestones. They are obvious references to other games and movies like Devil May Cry, Lord of the Rings and many others. If you haven't played CrossCode yet, I hope I was able to inspire you to do so. It's available on Steam, PS4, PS5, Xbox and Switch. And if you're not sure, you can still try out the demo on Steam. The beauty of CrossCode is only the beginning of a series of essays I want to create for games I truly love and I feel like many people don't know about. If I only get one person to try out the game, the work for this video was worth it. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.